A couple of weeks ago, I shared with my community member, jumping from one program to another is a form of procrastination. Is that who you are? Then you need to watch this video. I'm Michelle and I am a visibility and marketing coach and I love helping female coaches to simplify their marketing so that they can get seen, get heard and get paying clients. A couple of weeks ago, I shared this post inside with my community members and the post was about how jumping from one program to another is actually a form of procrastination. And I know a lot of coaches out there going from one masterclass to another masterclass or bootcamp to bootcamps or these workshop to workshop. And in reality, it's really about the inability to implement what you have learned and actually put them and seeing the result that you want. So one of the community members replied and said, the problem of being a coach and having that mindset of seeing everything as an opportunity is really the, the reason why a lot of coaches procrastinate. And there's so many things, so many lessons that's out there. So if you're finding yourself learning from one source to another and jumping from one program and then to another, this might be the reason. But this is only one tip of the iceberg in terms of all the things that you would like to do in your coaching business, but you just somehow could not get to it. So today we're going to talk about why constantly jumping from one program to another or one learning resource to another is the biggest roadblock and what are the five mistakes that coaches are currently making that is very deadly and costly. So let's get started. By the way, if you are here and you're watching this video, we have just surpassed the 300 subscriber recently. And while the number may not seem big, it is a big deal to me. And I'm sure you can relate this to yourself. Starting from scratch is really something that's the hardest. So having 300 subscriber is huge for me to celebrate. So those of you who decided to stay and subscribe, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support and thank you for being here. If you're here and you have not hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to hit that subscribe button because this is going to encourage me to make better content each time. So today we're going to talk about the five mistakes that coaches are making that can be really deadly in your coaching business. And this is the reason why you find yourself in the learning trap. So let's get to it. Mistake number one is you're finding yourself in a constant learning trap. There's so many information out there and new things are going to come up as you progress and grow your coaching business. And you're going to see that there are some skills that you absolutely need in order to keep moving forward. And there are skills that it's just nice to have. But somehow you find yourself signing up after master classes, master classes and workshop, and you continue to take these lessons from different sources because you're thinking that maybe different strategies will help you do a little more. But what you don't realize is that by going into different sources, you end up taking bits and pieces from this coach, that coach, and you're trying to put the pieces of puzzle together. So instead of having the big picture, now you have little tiny pieces here and there, and it just doesn't make sense. And so instead of having that clarity of exactly what I need to do next, you find yourself in this situation where not only do you find yourself overwhelmed and you have no idea of where to be because everyone's approach is very different. So my suggestion is stick to what you need the most, understand in which season of your coaching business that you're currently on. Um, perhaps you're one to three years in your coaching business and you're still trying to figure out your niche statement. You're still trying to figure out how, where's my ideal clients and how do I connect with them? How do I talk to them? And Perhaps that is something that you need to learn from one source and one source only. So until you master that, do not 
attempt to pick up new skills or new knowledge because that will only put you in an analysis paralysis state. Now, if you are someone who's moving forward and you're ready to scale, maybe you're looking into launch your business, maybe you're looking into email marketing, all these different type of strategy where you can expand your coaching business, perhaps that is exactly what you need to learn. But again, you want to stick to one learning resource, master that before you jump into the next. Otherwise, things are just going to be very scattered and you're confused and there's just so many things to do. New things is always going to come up. And so you don't want to be in that constant learning trap where you're not actually seeing any progress. Mistake number two is lack of implementation. So this one is actually related to the last one that we talked about. You have all these learning tools and skills that you have collected over the years, and then somehow you just never implemented them. And you can learn from one teacher, but one teacher can only show you through the door. It's up to you to actually walk through that door and take some action step in order to see the result that you want. So mistake number two is not implementing them. So you find yourself continue to have these learning and it's like collecting tons of cookbook, reading it from cover to cover, but yet nothing really came out from the oven. So remember, information is only valuable as application. So once you learn it, implement it, test it out, run with it, and this way your result can tell you what your next step would be. Mistake number three is to give up too quickly. Once you learn the skill, you implement it, and this is a common mistake, and I was guilty of it because when I first started out, I implemented something. It was a workshop that I had offered, and if I don't see any signed ups, I quickly assume that the workshop is not working. This is not working. And so I give up quickly and just not touch it again. But in reality, what you want to do is you want to implement it, see the result. And if something is not working, there's a reason why it's not working. So this is an activity I do all the time with my student, including myself, is every launch, what I would do is I would sit down and ask myself what was working well and what's not working. And so this way I can focus on what is not working and how I can make it better the next time around. And so you want to continue to give yourself assessment in terms of all the things that you're doing in your coaching business, what went well, including your discovery call. Every call, I remember this is something that I do every discovery call. After the call, I would sit down and ask myself what went well on that call and what would I like to implement in the next call. This process is important because then you can identify where is the loophole and how do you go back and fix it so that you close the loop quickly. And this is the process I implement in my own business all the time is by asking what went well and what can I do better next time. This way I can see the opportunity of how I can run with it again, repeat, and so that I can rinse out and flush out all the things that didn't work this time. So don't give up quickly if you don't see the result that you desire. There's something that's in your work that we need to look at. Because essentially there is no perfect strategy. There's a strategy that works for you. And in order for you to identify what is that perfect strategy for you, we need to learn from the mistake that we have made and either tweak it or perfect it or make it better next time so that we can continue to grow and thrive. Mistake number four is niching down too early. I know this is so controversial because there are so many different school of thoughts when it comes to niching. Some say you need to niche down as early, as quickly as possible. Others said don't niche down. My philosophy is simple and it just goes back to business marketing 101. And your market will create demand and your demand will create supply. So if you niche down too quickly without understanding what your market actually needs and wants, then you're creating a supply and you're putting yourself into this tiny little bubble where there is no demand 
、um, the things that people will want to buy. And there's a lot of example of how niching down too quickly and too early or too narrow can actually hurt your business than actually helping it. So, for example, you remember the Segway that had came out, where it's all about revolutionizing people's transportation, and it costs five thousand dollar for the damn thing, but it has no practical use. If I live in the city and it's a short distance, I can simply just walk to where I want to be. Why would I want to spend five thousand dollar on the Segway to get me there? And same thing with. Long distance. If I have to drive, why would I want to purchase the Segway? So niching down too quickly can actually hurt you. And if there's no demand from your market, then you're going to find yourself having a hard time getting people booking the discovery call with you, and they don't see the value of why they should hire you. So while niching down is probably a good idea, but you don't want to do it too quickly without understanding your market and what is it that people want from you, and that. Is the most important thing and the most important questions that you should be asking yourself. Mistake number five is not niching down when it is time. This is contradictory to mistake number four, where I talked about niching it down too quickly. But when it is time, you do want to niche it down so that you can serve the ideal perfect clients that you are passionate about in serving, and these are the people who you can make the most impact with. And so the key to getting paying clients is about getting into conversation where your potential client would be. So what you want to do, especially in the beginning of your coaching business, is to come up with a core message statement as quickly as possible. What this statement will do is it's going to serve as the foundation of how you position yourself and your business in the market, so that you can get into those conversation with your potential clients. This is why I'm hosting Visibility Marketing Bootcamp that's coming up April 15 through 19. Because I notice the biggest struggles that a lot of coaches are having is not knowing what to say and how to say it in order to get their audience to click, like, and buy. And so one of the exercises I'm going to take you through this Visibility Marketing Bootcamp is that. You're going to be able to identify and and come up with that core message so that you can get out there and start the conversation with your potential client, which will then create the demand so that you can create the supply or your service that will get them into your coaching business program. So, what's the bottom line here? Today, I have shared five deadly mistakes that's holding you back in this procrastination and a constant learning loop. You gotta remember, broaden your horizon is great, but when it comes to growing your coaching business, it's important to understand it's how deep you go and not just scratching the surface of a system or strategies that you have learned. And you gotta take them into implementation to see the result. And even if you don't see the result that you desire, you gotta stand back and reassess in terms of what have worked and what needs to be improved, so that you can continue to improving the process and the system. And some might argue that there's no effective and no effortless way of building your coaching business. Everything takes work, and it's going to take you years in order to get there. But I would argue otherwise because there's definitely an effortless and effective way of building your coaching business. But all it takes is someone to actually show you step by step of how to get there using the least amount of time and money that's wasted by avoiding these five mistakes that I have talked about. You can get there faster than I did, and it might take someone twenty years to get there. But if you're learning from the step that others have taken and avoiding the mistake that holds you back in this learning trap, then the action that you're taking and implementing yourself, I don't see why you can get there faster. So until then, keep coaching. I will see you in the next video. 